Hey everyone, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop. Today we're going to tie a summer steelhead fly um, that's a little traditional pattern that I like to use here on the Rogue, so follow along with us. So for the hook, we're going to start with the Daiichi 2051, and this is a size 3, um, which I like to use quite a bit on the Rogue, especially if I haven't caught a fish in a while. It seems like my traditionals just get bigger and bigger. And I like to um, just pinch the barb in the vise because um, it's going to happen later anyway. And we're going to use pink thread for this guy, which is the Danville 140 count um, in the hot pink, which will come in at the very end of the fly um, and just allow us to build a little bit of a bright head. And then we're going to wrap medium silver ultra wire in there. And I like to run it um, all the way up the length of the body. And the thing that that does, it just gives you a nice even base um, around the body so that you don't have any bulking halfway down. And just come up, there's going to be about five turns of this just by itself. Just to give a little bit of shine to the end of the fly here and try and get those wraps as close to each other as you can. And then just pull it up and then I'll have crinkle mirror flash for the body. And I'll just take a couple strands out of here. And tie them in as well throughout the length of the body. Just go till it meets with that last wrap of wire. And then we're going to use purple schloppen wrapped up through the body. Um, and this fly is going to be purple and black, which um, around here on the Rogue, I'm one of those guys who mainly just fishes after work. Um, and in those evening hours, I have about as much confidence as in purple as, as anything else. And I just like to kind of peel the feather back a little bit. And we're going to strip one side of this guy. Just pull all those off. Kind of straighten them back out. Come up to that point where you pull them away. And you just need to make sure that you're tying so that the front of the feather is towards the top of the fly. Whichever, whichever side you peel, you can kind of do that from either side. Same like the other materials to build a little bit of body in there and taper. Just wrap that feather down until the place where the body is, is going to end. Clip it off. And then take the crinkle flash, kind of fold it so it's as flat as possible so it kind of comes out a little bit wider and that will just save you some time wrapping it forward here. Just nice consistent wraps making sure you don't see any of that pink thread underneath of it. We'll come up just a little bit higher, actually. Gives it a nice translucent body. Just clip those real short. And then we'll bring our schloppen up through. And these you can just space um, 
based on how full you want the body to be. Um, kind of pull, pull the fibers a little bit as you lay them down. Sometimes I wrap, like to wrap the whole feather a couple times ahead of the body. Right now, just to give it a little bit lighter look, I'm just gonna take it off right there um, and save that extra part of the slopping. And then over the schlop and we'll take the wire. Pretty much every quarter half wrap, you have to grab these feathers and make sure that they're not getting caught in that wire. And there we go, we can just leave it right on top, right there. And then we're going to tie in just to give the body a little bit of barring. This is Amherst in purple, um, which I like to lay. You can lay it right on top of the fly um, or kind of cover the fly a little bit just to give it a little bit of body on the sides. And then on top of that, Really for what will be the main wing, we'll use strung Chinese saddle in black. And you can do one or two of these guys. Um, today I think we'll do two and we'll try to just find two pretty identical ones. And we'll do what we call marrying the tips, where you just bring them, bring them up together and just get those tips so that they're going to lay somewhat close to each other. And I'm just going to tie them in right on the stem instead of peeling everything back because I'm actually going to keep, um, keep the base of these feathers for later in the fly. And that's getting just a little bit long, so just peel back to the point. Right about there is good. And just get a couple good hard wraps on there before you trim it. And then on top of that, for a collar, we're actually going to use that same feather, just a little bit lower down um, on the feather. We'll just clip away some of those really spiky, peel away the fuzzy stuff too. And we'll just be left with kind of that really webby stuff, which is really nice for these collars. Grab that with our hackle plier. Just make sure that it lays down. Just wrap right on top of that stem. And 
then we'll just build up the head a little bit. That bright pink just gives it a little, little dot to stick out, make the fly a little bit more visible to the fish to two whip finishes on there. Clip it. And then for the head cement, nowadays I'm using the Loon hardhead stuff, um, which takes a bit to dry, but it seems like um, for a head like this, it just gives it um, a little bit ni nicer finish than some of the UV stuff. And I'll just, for a little traditional, it helps to have a bodkin um, to get that on there instead of doing it with the big brush. We'll just kind of cover the fly, rotate. Yep. And then let it dry. So thanks for following along with this Rogue River uh, traditional fly. It's black and purple. It makes it really versatile in the mornings and evenings on a light line, even a floating line. And then throughout the day, it's a good searching pattern for steelhead under a sink tip. Thanks for tuning in.